Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be check out a pawn or binary exploitation challenge from uh, Hack the Box. This is a very easy challenge. It's a Jeeves. It's kind of an introduction to binary exploitation. So that's why I'm going to go uh, quite in depth here. I'm going to try to explain everything uh, in a way that's easy to understand for beginners. Um, so let's jump into this. So first of all, the challenge gives us obviously a file, a binary file here. It's 64-bit. Uh, and uh, it's not stripped, which means that uh, all the names, the original names are still in there, uh, the function names and stuff like that. Um, so right, from that, the first thing I always do is I go into Ghidra. And Ghidra is a very nice tool that's going to allow us to generate some pseudo C code here um, from the assembly code. Because assembly is very hard to read and, and this really helps. And from opening this file, uh, this binary, into Ghidra, we can see that there's only really a main function here from the symbol tree. Uh, and this main function, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to ask us, hello, sir, how are you? May I have your name? We're going to enter a name. It's going to say our name and then have a good day. Then if this certain val uh, variable is equal to this value here, it's going to open flag.txt and print it out to us. OK, so let's see if that is also what occurs. So let's do run Jeeves here. And we see, okay, it says, hey, uh, Bing Draconian, have a good day. So that's what we expected, right? Now let's go a little bit more in depth in this program here. So the first things we notice here is this variable we want that we want to be equal to lead babe is set in the beginning here and it's set to dead code. Um, and it's not, and we cannot change it up here. So, so we want to change this though. Um, second thing we notice is uh, something you always have to look for is where does my input go? Uh, what's the size of the buffer that my input is going to go to? And we see that it uses gets here, which is not limited, limited to how many characters we can use. So we can use any amount of characters. And it's loading that input into this local 48 uh, variable here, which is a, an array of uh, 44 elements. So we're loading uh, 44 characters into this array, but what happens if we enter 48 characters uh, or, or an, any number higher than 44? So let's see what happens then. Uh, so we're gonna f quickly get some characters here. So let's do let's do 50 and see what happens. So if we run Jeeves again and enter that, we see nothing happens. Uh, what if we enter 100? Maybe we get in an overflow then. And yes, we get a segmentation fault. So we over we have overflown this binary, and we got a segmentation fault. Now up here we also uh, overflowed the um, the buffer. However, we didn't get the segmentation fault. Well, what does this segmentation fault mean? This segmentation fault means that you have overwritten the return address on the stack. Now, how does a stack work? So a stack is, and I'm going to get a picture here, so a stack is something that grows downwards and every function is pretty much going to use it. So when a function starts, it's going to put their local variables on the stack, it's going to put all their arguments on the stack, and it's going to put the return address also on the stack. Now what happens here? So let's say our variable here, our buffer is local variable 1. So what we did is we overwrote variable 1, we overwrote variable two, all of these arguments, and we overwrote the return address. So when it wanted to move on, so uh, when it got to the return here at the bottom, it tried to jump to something that isn't really a, that isn't a assembly. It's, it's not something you can run. And that's why we get this uh, segmentation fault here. However, we do not want to overwrite that because we want uh, to read the flag, and the flag is, is before the return, we want to make sure that this local C variable here is gets set to that. Now, okay, I showed you the stack here earlier, and, and it's and all the variables are on it on here. Um, so local variable one, local variable two, and so on. The variables in our case are our buffer, this integer here, this pointer, and then that thing that we want to override. And notice how our buffer is above this thing that we want to overwrite. Um, so what th that means that our buffer is going to be above on the stack, above this thing. The stack overflows downwards, so we have the possibility of overflowing local C here. Um, but obviously we need to know how many bytes does it take for us to overflow local C. A and then we can uh, enter that amount of bytes in padding, 
and then uh, overflow C with the correct value here, which is lead babe. Okay, so let's count that out. So I'm gonna go into paint here, and we're gonna draw a little stack here. So this is our stack. Our stack grows downwards, like we know. So here we have stuff on the stack. If we add something, it will get added right here. So what's the first thing that we add to the stack? Well, that's our buffer of 44 bytes. So, okay, 44 bytes. So uh, one length here is eight bytes. So 44, so that's eight, 16, 32, 40, and then we still need four, so four is half. So, okay, this is gonna be our uh, buffer, which is gonna contain our input, our name, right? Okay, then what's the next thing that we want to add to the stack? Well, let's take a look here. We want to add our this integer here, and an integer is of size four bytes, so we can see that here as well, length four. Uh, and after the integer, we want to add a pointer, which is of size eight, uh, because we're 46 bit. So let's add that. So first, this first integer, we can fit that in right here, because this is four bytes. So that's gonna be that integer. And then we're gonna add eight more bytes for that pointer. So that's our pointer. Now, the last thing that we're gonna add to the stack here is our uh, our integer that we want to overwrite, that, uh, that, that code which we want to make lead babe. So we're gonna write that here. This is where it's gonna end up on the stack. Uh, now, how many bytes is that in total? Uh, all of this is, so we have 44 for this, we have four uh, for the integer, and eight for that. Uh, and then we also, uh, so what, when we are going to overwrite, we also want to overwrite this part here because we need that in order to get to our integer here. So we're gonna add four more for that. So then we have 44 plus four plus eight plus four, and that's gonna equal to be 60. Is that correct? So 44 plus 16, yeah, that's gonna be 60. So we want to write uh, 60 padding bytes and then get to the value that we actually want to override that. Um, so this is all in theory, and let's take a look at how that actually works in our binary here. So I have this program open in IDA, and in IDA I have set a breakpoint at the compare where it's going to check our value. So we're going to run this, and then we're going to put 44 bytes as input so that we fill this whole buffer and then we can see everything on the stack here. Okay. So we have stopped here, and here we can see the stack. So we have our 44 bytes here, as we said, and then our, those four extra bytes. Then here we have that integer, then here we have that pointer, and then we have this dead code, and this dead code is the value that we want to overwrite. And, and we saw that here, this uh, hex here. If I hover over it for a while, will it show what it is? Yeah, there it goes. So that's uh, dead code. And we want that to be uh, lead babe here. Um, so, okay, what happens if we write uh, 60 bytes and then our lead code? Let's take a look at how to do that. So, we're going to keep on going from our Python here. We're going to do 60 padding bytes. And now we want to put some binary on the stack. How, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use pawn tools, and I'm using Python 2 here, so I'm going to import pawn. And then we're going to add here uh, pawn dot. P64. Now, why P64? P64 is going to pack bytes uh, for 64 bit. And packing byte means packing bytes uh, kind of means that we're going to put it in the right order. So, as you see here, it represents as that code. However, if you look at the actual stack here, so if I synchronize with RSP, let's quickly synchronize with RSP. There we are. Then we have. Here we have dead code, but as you can see, it's D-E-A-D-C-O-D-3. So it's it's not like the actual string, uh, because it isn't a string, it's bytes. Uh, so this P64 function is going to make sure that it's uh, correct on the stack. So, okay, let's do that. Uh, so what do we want to put here? Well, we want to put these bytes here that we that are ver the variable that we're going to overwrite has to be equal to. So, okay, we're going to copy this. Go back into here, uh, paste them down, and then when we run this, you'll see okay, we have our uh, bytes here, and we're gonna put that into a file. So let's call that input.txt, and now we've put that into the file. So now we can, we're gonna use this as input for our program. 
Okay, so what are we going to do? We're, let's stop running this. We're going to go into the debugger here, process options, and we're going to say, okay, take input from the file input.txt. These parameters are just a uh, command line uh, input parameters, so uh, that, that would be the same as, as uh, using just this in the command line. So chiefs and then uh, with our input. So, but that's for IDA. Okay, so we've done just that and we have run the f thing, uh, the binary, and we are currently at our compare instruction where we set the breakpoint. Okay, let's look at the stack again. We'll notice the stack contains a lot more A's now, uh, 61 is an A. Um, and then it contains the correct string here. And we can see that, okay, that seems to be correct. So this compare, if we hover over it, I notice that this is a little small. Can I put this a little bigger? Yeah. Okay. So if we hover, hover over this, this, we'll see that this contains the correct bytes uh, that it wants. So if we go into the graph view as well, we'll notice that, yes, if we skip one instruction, yes, this arrow, this red arrow here lights up and is blinking. That means it's going to take this jump. So that's the one we want because here it's going to open the flag.txt file. So that worked and it's going to open the flag.txt file and that's great. So we have pretty much used our buffer overflow to get into this otherwise unreachable uh, part of the function. Now let's see if that works on the machine here. So we have a uh, the server. Let's net get to the server and see if it gives us the flag. So we're going to use input.txt as an input here. And it says, okay, hello, good sir, may I have your name? Hello, our ace. And then this, uh, this part that we overwrote I hope you have a good day. And then it says, here's a small gift. And then we have the hack the box flag, welcome to the land of pawn and pain. So that was this video. Um, I tried to explain the stack and, and everything as good as I can. But if you have any more questions, if something that I explained wasn't that clear, feel free to leave all of that down below in the comments. Um, leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you back in another one. Thanks, take care.